3. And I'm reading 1 Peter chapter 3 first, but I am going to focus just for a few minutes a day on Matthew chapter 5. But 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 14 says, But if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. It is an offshoot actually from St. Matthew's Gospel chapter 5 and in particular verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The persecuted must have a foot in the spirit and a foot on the earth. The persecuted must have a foot in the spirit and a foot on the earth. Simply because in order to appreciate somebody or to despise somebody, they first have to be exposed. And it's a critical piece and I, I may not hope today that the foot in the spirit is significant because the only way that you can express that you have one foot in the spirit is to be able to transfer what is in the spirit to the foot that's on the earth. Somehow we have given ourselves over to the ontological, to the mystical, to the ethereal, without understanding that we are the conduit of what is spiritual to be transferred into the earth. Whatever God is doing in our community and whatever God is doing in your space and my space, we are the ones who are the expression of what he is doing. It's very critical because oftentimes we think we're just receptacles of the grace of God without giving thought to expressing that grace that signifies that we are his chosen children. It's important to understand that, that in order for somebody to appreciate you or some, for somebody to despise you, you have to be, might I say, in the game. Because if you're not relevant to the circumstances of other people's lives, then you can't be appreciated or you can't be despised. If I'm understanding this scripture correctly, he is saying that whenever you expose yourself to be appreciated by doing the will of God, at the same time, you're gonna to have to deal with being despised. Uh, I, I gotta to talk to somebody in here that's on the edge and ready to move into a new dimension. We have become so concerned about receiving, we haven't yet realized how much we have to give. Because the whole church thing seems to suggest 
that everybody is in need of something, something more in order to give something out. But the fact is, if you're in here right now and you're clothed in your right mind, you have overcome something. I wish I could talk to you. Everybody in here, no matter how weak they are, have overcome something. And in overcoming, it qualifies you immediately to be able to be a blessing to others. One of our problems is I want to be blessed. Pray that my family be blessed. Pray that my husband be blessed. Pray that my wife, my children, pray that everything in my house be blessed. We need a group of folks who are now praying, Lord, make me a blessing. Put me out there so I can be appreciated and I don't mind being despised. Someone has to be exposed in order to cause appreciation or cause shame. You have to be out there and you have to be seen. There has to be involvement and anytime you get involved with anything, there are going to be risks. One of the things that's happening to us is we have become so used to being called the son of Pharaoh's daughter that we no longer want to suffer reproach with the children of Israel. Do you understand the metaphor? We have become so comfortable with being in Egypt, those of us that God has spared in order to be a blessing. And here is Moses who is scheduled for death, but God spared him to be the leader to take the people out of Israel. If Moses had become complacent with enjoying the riches of Egypt, he would not be available to do what God had spared him to do. The question I need to ask everybody in here is do you know what God has saved you to do? Uh, it's not only in receiving, but God has given you so you may give to somebody else. Oh, I, I feel like preaching. I'm trying to uh, be intellectual today. Uh, you have to be involved. You have to get in the fight. So much is going on around us that if we don't get in the fight, then there's going to be a reckoning for what we didn't do. Many of us believe that sin is only a sin of commission. But God told me that there's another sin and that's a sin of omission. What I should be doing that I'm not doing makes me as guilty as what I'm doing what I shouldn't be doing. Oh, don't fool yourself. The sin of omission is as bad as the sin of commission because you're standing there full of power and all you want to do with your power is shout. But God said, I didn't empower you just to shout. I empowered you to walk back into the kingdom that I brought you out of and touch somebody else's life. Uh, I'm going to take it further. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, in order for that to happen, there has to be a risk because love takes risks. Love is not a passive, indifferent emotion. Love is an emotion that moves into dangerous places. Love is so powerful that love will give itself up in order for somebody else to be changed. I wonder has God ever put somebody a burden on your spirit? I mean a burden in you for somebody else. 
I might as well get close to you. Uh, has God ever just put something in you for somebody else to the point where you felt foolish for continuing to put your effort where you're not getting any results but yet still he will not lift the burden because the burden has to be there to cause the intensity to keep you working where you're not getting any results. And to add to that, Satan likes to target folk who are weapons for God to deliver other people out of the bondage that they have. Satan hates to see you coming. And here's how he works. God works through people, the devil works through people. And when you are doing something in service for the Lord, look out because somebody's coming after you to shut your mouth, shut your testimony, and keep you from accomplishing what God set you out to do. You got to be ready to take a risk. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here today. The risk has to be taken because gifts are many times misused. You so love the world that you give your only begotten son, you gonna get him killed. Can I say that again? You are going to get him killed. The risk is that great that you are going to literally get him killed. He was in the world and the world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. One side. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Why? Because even to them who believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the will of God. There is something about the DNA that God has put in you that will connect to the DNA that he's sending you to. Which means then, that you're going to be rejected on one side, but you're going to be received on the other side. Well, who will reject you? Those who aren't a part of the DNA that you have, and you receive your DNA from God. Those who are not a part of who he sends you to. Everybody who receives you is who he sent you to. Everybody who rejected you is who he didn't send you to. Many are called. I wish you'd understand it. But few are chosen. Can I go to your family for a minute? Weren't you just about the worst one in your family? Oh, I'm going to take my time here. <laughs> I think I touched the vein. You weren't the goody-goody two-shoes. You ain't goody-goody yet. <laughs> the goody-goody two-shoes, the sweet one, the nice one, who was always at home when everybody was in the club. <laughs> Amen. You never strayed. You never smoked a joint. Or were you the one that was in the middle of the party, cutting up all the time, uh, one friend of mine said, he said one time, he said, his mother said, son, you got to stop keeping bad company. He told his mother, mother, I'm the bad company. <laughs> but
but as bad as you were. Not the best, but you had a DNA because you were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. But you would have never known it if somebody with the DNA connected with you because they did what he said. He sends people to draw their own kind in spite of how they look from the outside because God had his hand on you before you got here because you were chosen in him before the foundation of the world and all you needed was to identify with somebody who identifies with him because you were never going to reject him when the right time came. Somebody had to come back where you are who was connected to him to draw you. It was not sight, it was spirit to spirit. It was not flesh to flesh, it was spirit to spirit. When the right spirit hits you, you come. Oh, I feel like speaking. He came to his own, his own received them not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Yet the risk was that he was condemned by the rest. He was questioned. He was held in suspicion. He was doubted. He was hated. And he was ultimately killed. He's the savior of the world. And I told you last week, I'll tell you again. Isaiah saw him as despised, rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. The esteem of man is not what you're looking for when you are on a mission for God. When you have to have accolades and have to be regarded as somebody significant and many of us make the big mistake of thinking it's a title that empowers us. I I wish you'd understand. A title means nothing if you don't have the power behind the title. And if you got the power, you don't need the title in order to operate and move in the presence of God. Oh God, I feel like shouting. I want to talk to somebody that's... One of the things that have restricted us for so long is we live for the accolades of men. And if we're not recognized, and if nobody praises us, you forgot to call my name. Uh, Bishop Jake told me a story once, he said, he said, no, I was through. I had left the church, I was cutting up in a manner that you can't imagine. And one lady, when everybody else had pushed him aside, and I'll tell you this, people will come to your funeral who will not come to your rescue. Oh, they'll dress up and, ooh. And want to talk for an hour. At your funeral, 
but wouldn't spend five minutes to come to your rescue. And that one little missionary lady without title is the reason why millions of people are saved today because God sent her to somebody who she thought she was rescuing for himself. What she didn't realize is that she was rescuing a powerhouse to deal with the whole world. You don't know who you're talking to when God sends you to somebody. Uh, you don't know who you're praying for when you're praying in secret and you're praying for somebody calling their name and you really don't even know. God just set them in your heart and you begin to pray and fast and call on the Lord to ease the burden for this person. But that person is on God's chessboard and you may be a pawn praying for a queen on the chessboard of God's working. All of this for good. This is his righteousness. And this is doing the will of God. So whenever you intend or whenever you decide to do the will of God and do it effectively, you risk being persecuted. It goes a little like this. Who does he think he is? Amen. Just act like you have some victory. Just go on a job and and don't have any weekend stories. Go on the job and act like you want to be honest with the time card. Act like you want to forgive somebody who mistreated you. Act like what God has placed in you and showing love and kindness. And when somebody insults you, you don't insult them back. When somebody mistreats you, you don't carry a grudge. You don't have meanness and malice and bitterness. And watch how people talk about you. Who does she think she is? Who does he think he is? Anytime you act like you have victory and power, somebody want to ask, who gave you permission? Let me put it in context of the scriptures. Who gave you permission to heal on the Sabbath day? Who gave you permission to open the blinded eye? Who gave you permission to touch a buyer with a dead body on it? Do you remember Jesus and the widow of Nain? When he touched the buyer? Nobody is supposed to touch anything that's carrying the dead. Who gave you permission? Because people who you bless have people who don't want to see you bless. And they want to destroy whoever is orchestrating the blessing. Why would you have a problem with me healing a man why would you have a problem with me delivering a woman? Why would you find any fault in the fact that it may not be the way you want to see it done, but I'm doing it anyway? 
why should we wait to an off Sabbath day when somebody's in need right now? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Why? Because it suits your tradition? One of the things that's ruining us is that we only believe that God is in this building. But the power of God is not in this building alone. The power of God is literally in you and I. I'm anointed when I'm giving food to the homeless. I'm anointed when I'm walking down the street and touching the lives of people who are less off than I am. And we need to take that anointing into the neighborhood where people are killing one another and declare the children of God have come. I'm going to go just another way. I'm going another way. There are times in our lives when we see certain people coming. And I'm sure that you have in your space folk who you know have dark spirits. I'm not asking you now to go through your list. (laughs) But there are some people around you who you know are negative. And you say to yourself, man, I don't want to be around certain people. I ain't going to let certain people in my space. Because they're just too negative, dark spirits. The kind of person that when you're around and they leave, you tired. You know what I'm saying. I I hope you're not married to one, but you just tired. See them on the phone. Oh, no way. Come to the door. You ain't home all of a sudden. And I have had that experience, and I have responded in that same way until I realized something. I realize that maybe I am the only light they know. I want you to think about it. And maybe my light will break through their darkness because greater is he that's in me. None of us would live with the joy of the Lord as our strength. If he did not console us in the middle of the most difficult times of our lives, when everybody around us was too weak to strengthen us, he strengthened us from the inside. And while you were waiting for the voices on the outside to give you the encouragement you needed, there was a voice on the inside. Oh, I wish you'd understand it. I keep telling you that many of us believe in a God on the outside, but we're atheists about the God on the inside. So now, the Beatitudes. If you notice the first ones, it deals with us struggling. Poor in spirit. They that mourn. They that are meek. They that hunger and thirst. After righteousness. If you notice those you will find that in those that I named, everybody there is needing something. So from a theological standpoint, we call those the need beatitudes. 
he recognizes beyond a doubt that all of us in here are needy. We need. I was talking to Bishop Jakes again. <laughs> and we were dealing with the woman thou art loose. And in the middle of the conversation, the question arises, when do they finally get loose? The other preacher said they got loose and now they want to be in charge. <laughs> and then of course it's birthed God's leading lady. Do you understand the progression? We don't need to keep loosing you right. after you're loose. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. The problem that I've noted in church mm -hmm. is the controlling element of the leader. Uh -huh. And in order to control as a leader, you have to keep people thinking they're in need. Yeah. Uh, can I go over that again? Yeah. One of the things that I, I want to use the word despise, this is a little strong. But one of the things, uh, oh, I know the word, I'm concerned about, yeah. is the fact that everything is about a demon. And everything is about the dead. And what that does is it suggests to the hearer that there is a third party. There's God, there's you, and then there's a third party who can interfere with everything that God does. So in order for us to rid ourselves of the third party, you need me. And depending on the size of your demon, see I have to have the proper blessing depending on the size of your demon. Now that demon is not a $20 demon. So consequently, I have to talk about the power of witches and sorcerers and wizards and, and demons and the devil because now I need you looking over your shoulder and then looking to me for the exorcism so that you can be free. But that is not empowering because what Jesus did was when he finished on the cross, he said, it is finished. What was finished? The power of Satan was broken and no child of God has to look over his or her shoulder looking for the devil to come up somehow and stop them and wipe them out. The devil is alive. The devil wants you to think that he can do anything to you he chooses to do. But then when Job lost everything, he said nothing about the devil. He said, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. It ain't the devil that's stopping us from doing our job. It's we who are stopping us from doing our job. Yeah. 
as long as we have the symptoms of failure, or as long as we show our selfish, self-centered attitudes, then all is well. But when we decide to move from need beatitudes to help beatitudes, can I take it further? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. As soon as we show strength, and as soon as we express deliverance, as soon as we stand on our own two feet, as soon as we demonstrate our faith, as soon as we extend our hand to help, then comes the persecution. Who qualified you? We know who you are. Aren't you the carpenter's son from Nazareth? People seek to reduce you when God is using you. I want to talk to somebody, I, I want to talk to somebody that wants to break out for the rest of this year and do good wherever they can find their hands to do good and join the army that says we don't have to sit here in this neighborhood and let it go to the dogs. We've got a right to get up. We got the power to get up. We got the anointing to get up. We got the wisdom to get up. And we've been through enough hell to deliver somebody out of hell. Folk want to break you down again. That's what they want. You just too happy. You just serving everybody. Amen. Some folks are blessed. And some folk appreciate their blessing to the point where they'll risk everything to express it. I was thinking about my brother Chris the other day and I was talking to a friend of his in London and here's what I deduce from the conversation. If you don't think much and I'm talking to those of you, uh, you know, Gucci people and, and Brooks Brothers and to all of you wonderful people. Some of you won't even shout in your best clothes. You ain't even gonna praise the Lord in your best clothes, man. You scared to break those heels. You know. Here's what I deduced from the con conversation, dealing with somebody who was exposed to everything that's wonderful in this life. If you don't think anything about what you have, then you will risk everything because in your spirit you won't lose anything. Let me put it another way. If you don't think anything about the things you have, you will risk everything because you have nothing to protect. I 
I don't have to hold on to it. Because I know who gave it. Oh my God. I don't have to protect it because I know who loaned it to me. And it ain't nothing but a loan. Your clothes ain't nothing but a loan. Your car is nothing but a loan. Uh, last night was a five, a five alarm fire down the street from my house. And it took them almost all night to get rid of it and the house burned out. The Tesla lit the house afire. The Tesla lit itself afire and then burned the whole house down. Now today, you ain't got a Tesla and you ain't got a house. Gone. You don't own anything. That's why the Lord told you, don't be jealous. He said, jealousy, you know what jealousy is in a single word, a synonym? Possessive. The Lord said, don't be possessive. It's a sin. And yet he says, I'm a jealous God. Well, how can you be jealous and tell me not to be jealous? I came to church to be like you. Why can't I be jealous? Because you don't own nothing. I wish I could talk to you. Uh, that woman is your wife, but you don't own her. That man is your husband, but you don't own him. Amen. Grab him, hold him, don't let him out. Put a low jack on him. <laughs> Whatever your insecurities are, work them out. But you don't own him. When God gets ready to call any one of us home, you can't stop it. So when you don't think anything of what you've been loaned, you will give everything because you don't have to protect nothing God did not save us to protect ourselves from the assignment he has given us and this is why I'm looking at a sanctuary that has no windows to the outside and what we have made we have made a club out of going to church This has become a club where membership has its privileges. And if you walk in here with a cigarette breath, we'll put you out. Talk to me now. And if somebody doesn't look the part, why do we have to dress up like we're going to a wedding in order to come to church. Why? Well, I, I, why couldn't you wear the same dress or the same suit you wore last week? Why couldn't you wear it for three weeks? All you gotta do is wash it. Get it clean. No, because that's not the culture. The culture is what you call, I got to wear my Sunday best. Sunday best? But what about the rest who don't have a Sunday best? How does somebody feel comfortable or do we have an obligation to make people comfortable? Jesus said, the foxes are, have holes. The birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. 
Now, if you ain't got nowhere to lay your head, you homeless. But the homeless Jesus healed the sick. The homeless Jesus raised the dead. The homeless Jesus fed 5,000, then fed 4,000, then healed the lepers. The homeless Jesus had power. I got a home, but do I have power? Now for those who are working and for those who are we, we're recruiting for the job. Jesus said, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Anytime you start operating out of your strength, and here's what your strength is. Your strength is you ain't got to go put on some raggedy clothes to serve. I know you're doing something when you're serving in Gucci. Well, I don't want to get on my clothes. I want to redefine our activities into the future as a church. We are in this building two hours on Sunday in a plenary session, all of us together. Every other night and day in the week is a dark night. No activities in this building. The amount of square footage in here, if we put beds side by side in a military way, we could probably sleep 2,000 people. Parking lot across the street, not used, except for Sunday. Parking lot across the street can park 450 cars. So think with me, children of God. 450 people who sleep in their car, who got a job, could be sitting parked in that parking lot with parties and showers and security and big bright lights and have a good night's sleep in a safe environment, get up and shower and go to work. Some of us are one paycheck away from being in that space. Uh, I look at your neighbor and say the bishop is recruiting laborers for the vineyard. And Mother's Day is going to be a different Mother's Day. It ain't going to be the same. Get ready for it because it's not going to be the same. We got to address the reality of what mothers are going through in the climate of the environment in which we live. Amen. We celebrate mothers who have children. When are we going to celebrate mothers who have lost their children? When are we going to empower them and encourage them to stay in the race when their boys are in jail and their sons are being shot down in the street. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. What good is my joy if 
I can't share it. Kindness. Kindness. Think, think about it. If the Spirit of God gives you kindness, that relates to somebody. You don't, you don't need kindness for God. God don't need your kindness. Somebody in his image needs your kindness. Patience. Patience. God don't need your patience. Somebody who's the image of God needs your patience. Gentleness. You've been gentle with God lately? God don't need your gentleness. Your kids need your gentleness. Your wife needs your gentleness. Your husband. Somebody in your space. Somebody on the job. I'm talking to a preacher the other day. And the preacher says to me, well, well, I wouldn't, you, you think I'd take what Chris Rock took? It'll be a throwdown. I said, wait a minute, Reverend. Wait a minute. Aren't you filled with the Holy Ghost? Aren't you representing Jesus Christ? And then he threw in a scripture that ain't made no connection. You know, you know, you know. When, when you're dealing with folk that don't know nothing, they ain't they no connection. He said, yes, Jesus turned the other cheek, but then he turned. No, he turned the money changers table over. I said, I almost, I, I said, man, where is the connection between what he's doing to show that in my house, there should be focus on what is right, and that's me, and turning the other cheek. Amen. Jesus said, if they take your coat, give them your cloak also. In other words, no child of God should be talking about fighting back in revenge. Because that does not represent Jesus. Turn the other cheek. Patience. Kindness. Long suffering. Long suffering. That ain't for God. That's for somebody who is in his image, who is in your space. Temperance. Talk to me now. Why should I be have temperance? Because if you have temperance, you can have something left to help somebody else. Temperance. No, I'm gonna spend it all on myself. I work for it, I'm going to use it. What we need is an army. Because I'm coming to a close here and I haven't finished but I'm going to quit. What we need is to recruit Amen. men and women who have come to the realization Amen. that the problem in our community is ours. Should I say that again? The problems you have in your house are yours. You will reach out of the house to have help to solve the problem 
but you can't shift the problem on the person who is outside. The responsibility to fix the problem is who the problem belongs to. See how quiet we get? It's how quiet, don't don't get quiet. Get busy. Because it's our girls and our boys who are dying. It's our men who are going to prison. It's our people who are suffering. And we can't come out and stay out in the name of God when God has always come in to deliver from the problem. I'm sorry, but he didn't fill you with the spirit just to have a big house and a big car. And we have expostulated faith at the expense of love. Because we said, if you had my faith, you could have what I have so I don't have to help you. Saints, I want you to bow your heads where you are right now. And those of you who are out connecting to us today, I want you to bow your heads where you are. Because we're moving into a new phase. I can holler, I can scream, I can make you happy. Good praise leader can make you happy. But we gotta run inventory on our own spirits. And we've got to ask ourselves as individuals, what begins with me? What begins with me? Peace, love, joy, long-suffering, patience, kindness, gentleness, temperance. It begins with me. For the kingdom of God is not without. The kingdom of God is within. There is somebody, as I speak to you right now, and I prophetically declare that there is somebody that God has placed, I want you to focus, that God has placed in your heart. There is somebody that God wants you to call, wants you to reach out to, there is somebody that God wants you to take a little risk of being insulted, take a little risk of them slamming that phone down, take a little risk of them saying, I don't want to hear it. But there is somebody in your spirit right here Hey, somebody in your spirit right now, and it didn't just drop in there now. It was in your spirit when you came to this house. And what I'm saying to you is not new. It's just a confirmation. Some leader in this house has been frustrated because they can't get the response for what God has put them in leadership to perform. But God told me to tell you that your help is on the way. Stay the course. Keep the vision in sight. Write that vision plain because things are going to change. We're not going to change the whole world, but we're going to change the world around us. Join me in the spirit right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we cry out together. Here am I. Send me. 
as we contemplate the seriousness of where we are you told us to occupy until you come and our occupation right now is a focus on our children children's children my brother's children my sister's children the next generation of lawyers and doctors musicians the next generation of corporate managers it looks like they're being terminated on a day-to-day -day basis Stop the bleeding, Lord. Help us to stop the bleeding. For the blood is crying out to you. Help us to get in the race. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help us to get in the race. And if you believe God, give him a praise right now. If you believe God, give him a praise. The songwriter says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweet refrain but holy lay on Jesus' name. Oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. On oh, the ground, help me, Patrick. Is he seeking On Christ. On Christ. The solid the rock I stand, stand on the ground is sinking sand. Oh, the ground! Come on, he's calling it. Sinking sand, pass me, me not, old oh, to say. If you heard the Lord speak to you, those who are connected, I want you to pick up the phone and call 844-267-7729. Call us. Call us. Somebody's waiting to hear from you right now. You want to be empowered to bless others and touch lives? Call us. Call us. Call us. If you're in the sun, assembly, come on. Humble cry. Whoa, why? 